Okay, here we go. You good? We're hitting it. You ready? So we built down here, we have what we're gonna call the farmer brace. The only difference is we use brace pins so we didn't notch any of the treatment out. And on the other end, we've got what is a standard wide op brace. Heavy duty woven wire, I think it's 832, six, so six inch stay spacing. Standard one, three, three, six and a half foot T-posts. I think they're probably two and a half feet in the ground or something like that. Down here, we have the standard wide odd end panel is what they call it. Seven inch posts, seven by seven. These are seven inch by six and a half. So these are actually a half inch in diameter, bigger than what wide odd specs out. And they're foot and, uh, half a foot deeper in the ground. Uh, 52 inches out of the ground is what we left. So you do the math. Uh, did the same thing down there, seven inch on the end post. The next brace post down is a six and a half. All of them are seven foot. We don't have anything that's shorter than seven foot. So drove to full depth. And in the other corner, we have what I think will be a much better fence. So we're here to find out whether or not one of these fences is better than the other. So I apologize that this fence isn't the same length. Uh, the only reason it isn't is because I didn't have enough wire on hand. We just used an old piece of scrap and this is how long the piece of scrap was. Um, I don't think it's necessarily going to make a difference in how the fence fails. Uh, the only other difference is, is we've got uh, still eight inch, uh, eight line wires. So eight versus eight, the heavy duty wire versus the high tensile wire, which is a much smaller diameter, but a much stronger wire. And we still have eight line wires are still six inch stay spacing. The only reason this wire is just a touch taller is because our gaps down here aren't quite as big, but we've got welded braces. These are four inch posts driven four feet deep and very, very rocky soil. You saw yesterday how hard it was to pound them. And then we have one pipe, uh, two and three eighths SS 40 line post right there driven to two and a half foot deep to compare with that. Normally the line posts, I would space those out about 20 to 25 feet on a high tensile fence as opposed to 16 and a half feet on the standard farmer DOT ag fence style stuff. So the one thing we didn't put on both these fences is bar wire. I don't think the bar wire is gonna make any difference whatsoever. If the woven wire can't stop it with eight line wires, the bar wire is gonna make zero difference. So uh, we can do some more testing with bar wire later on, but for all intents and purposes, this should tell us whether or not one of these is stronger than the other. Um, if these braces survive, we're gonna take that car and we're gonna see what it takes to rip these braces apart. Remember, all these posts are driven, and if it takes a lot of force to pull these driven posts over over here, we can make a reasonable assumption that if we were to drive chain link posts for a chain link fence, they'd be pretty strong too. So we're gonna test that out. In just a minute, we're gonna take this car, which we have so eloquently decorated, and run it into that fence. You might ask yourself, why do we have the bowl head? Why do we put this on here? It's because we so badly wanted to pretend that we were gonna run into this fence with the bowl. Because we all know how horrible bowls are on fences. We thought we would make a bowl of our own, one that we have a little bit more control over. So this is our bowl. Wanted a Taurus, we have El Toro. Go ahead, fire it up. We did, we did spend a little bit of time shining it up, making sure it was ready for the job. Yeah. Cut it off, it's a little loud. <laughs> and if you wanna see us decorating this, you'll have to head over to Y Fly Guy and check that page out where we show you how we cut the exhaust off of it and did some other things. And when this car is done, when we're done with this car and we've gotten all the useful life out of it possible, we will be decorating it even more and it will be worth nothing but scrap price when we're done. So as long as it still runs, we will be doing things with it. Those videos will be on Why Fly Guy. This video is on SWI Fence to help you understand how to build a good quality ag fence. So we'll be doing some other testing as things goes on. I'd like to do a lot more testing about chain link fence and just different means and methods of getting things done. I really think the fence industry in general is stuck in olden times. So. We thought what funner way to test things than to destroy some stuff in the process. So.
good? We're hitting it. You ready? Kate's like, you're gonna hit the post. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna hit the post. So really, the brace on both of these held up fairly nicely. What do we got down here though? I think, look at, look at this, look at here. I don't know where the, oh, hey, here they are. It actually broke the knots. As you can see, the fence though is still uh, actually in good straight shape. I don't know what this stuff is, but that's some, that's some bumper, <laughs> that's some bumper stuff. Oh yeah, by the way, this car, this front car runs on freedom. This is my life. I treat this baby with very utmost care and respect. I would hate it if anything bad happened to it. All those knots are good. It did take a lot of force to break through these. All right, let's go check this fence out and see how it did. So as could be expected, that one actually snapped and this one just stretched. We got everything still tied on, but obviously it's laid over and all the wires completely stretched out. That's the major difference between low carbon and high tensile. So that one, when it hits its braking strength, just goes and breaks, which means it can take a heck of a force and still just bounce back to its natural state until you hit that braking strength. Which is why when you have bulls and cows and things like that constantly pushing on it, you're never gonna hit it with a El Toro. You're gonna have cows and stuff hitting it. So when they're just pushing on it and stuff, it'll, it'll spring back. This stuff, once they push on it and stretch it out, it's all loose. A huge, huge benefit to using high tensile. There's the post, that's all the deeper it was in the ground, this deep. And it was solidly in the ground yet. So whether or not we had concrete on this post, let's say it's a chain link post, this is a chain link fence. Whether we had concrete on that post makes zero difference, none. It bent right at the ground. Um, if you got really soft ground, you might have to pound the post maybe four feet deep, but this is only in the ground two and a half feet deep and still held up to the abuse that we just dished it through. So. That myth that we have to use concrete on chain link fence posts is fairly easily busted. Usually if we're gonna drive them, we go three feet deep, so this would be another six inches deeper in the ground, but it's still gonna fold over at the ground. The benefits to not using concrete is we don't have to worry about frost heave. Up in the northern climates where they got a lot of water in their soil and stuff like that, they've got serious frost heave issues. And not using concrete is a big, big benefit. In a dry climate like ours, we don't have to worry about rust or anything, but even rust. The concrete's gonna heave and you're gonna have concrete issues well in advance of that post rusting, so. All right, let her rip, tater chip. Uh, I don't know, it just depends. What do you wanna do? You wanna give it a bump first? I'll give her a bump. Give it a bump. Give it a snug. Oh yeah, that's a snug bump. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, hang on. Dang it, Bobby! Hook it on directly to the post. Yeah. We're gonna have to hook it directly onto the post. Oh uh, yeah, we're still only getting 12 miles a gallon. Okay, boy, I wish the windshield washers worked in this thing. All right, take two. Let's go.
Yep. Oh, you're going to have to hit it harder than that. Okay, here we go. El Toro! Ripped it right out of the ground. El Toro! And that's the problem with this style of brace, as you'll see this one snapped off and that one pulled right up out of the ground. That's exactly what you see is that end post that you're tying to jacking up out of the ground every time. You get that jacking action, so that is the problem with these braces. Now we're going to go on to the other one. We'll try it there. How do you feel about this? Quality. You probably better pull up all the way up to that post and let El Toro have a good shot at it. Ready? I'm ready. I was born ready. You know it's gonna happen. What did we lose? Um, that whole piece. Man, I thought they made those bumpers stronger than that. Why is there cloth in between there? What's that all about? It's a pillowcase. Why would somebody do that? It must have been not getting warm enough in the winter. We call this redneck testing, if you didn't know. It's not super scientific, but what we're doing is putting it through its paces. You get the idea if something's tough. Apparently that's, that's a little tougher than I thought. I think we're gonna have to come back and try this in some super sloppy ground with like maybe a four wheel drive. Cause in super sloppy ground, this thing would have just jerked right out. Well, we'll get it. Well, we lost our bumper. Okay, back it up. Okay. We still got the back. Take two on this one. Now the front bumper's gone. Can't even tell each other's right. Service vehicle soon. <laughs> yeah, well, I wonder why. Back up a little bit more. Until you feel a bump. Keep going. Okay, that's it. Alright, let her rip! We got some! <laughs> Now what are we going to pull these out with? I ain't guessing they'll do it. One more good one. Hey, what do you know? It just jacked this one out of the ground again. That apparently, if you want to hook on to that and tow it, that's the best point to tow it. That's taking a lot of abuse. All right. Ready? Yeah, go over to that one. There's a little glass in the seat. It says it's hot. It says it's a little roasty. It says the trunk's open, too. The trunk's open. Hey, could you catch our trunk for us? I can't believe the airbags that go off on that. Oh. Come on! <laughs> it won't go! This is, it won't go! Give it a second. What? Give it a second. Give it a second. It's really dinging at me. It's like really, they, it's super angry. The El Toro is super angry. They ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I'm floored. Yeah, that's it, that's it. That's all we got. Thank you, Joe. This is a lot of juice. I got it. Like you push on the gas? I am all the way down. This is all we got. 
Come on, go! Hang on! She's dead. She's dead. She's dead. El Toro is super hot. I thought you said you closed my trunk. It's a hard day at the office today. Oh, this is all that's left of our bowl. We had a lot of fun. We tested a lot of theories. Not everything worked out like we thought it was gonna work out. I definitely thought the braces were gonna fail a little bit faster than they did. When they did fail, they failed like we expected them to fail with the end post being ripped out, but it took a lot more work than I thought it was going to. I mean, we ripped the front bumper off, the back bumper off, ripped chains through the trunk, um, all in an effort to pull them out of the ground. I think that we would have completely different results if we were in a softer ground scenario, but we did have really firm, rocky, solid ground out here. And so maybe one of the things we need to do in a future video is test that out, given a softer ground scenario. Uh, the wire failed exactly like we'd expect it to fail. We broke the knots right at the weakest point of the knots on the high tensile wire. Uh, we all know that's the weakest point of that wire. And the low carbon wire, um, just our standard ordinary fence, did exactly what we thought it was gonna do, stretched out, just laid right over. Never broke anything off of either one of the braces. Not one single wire broke off of the woven wire. So that's pretty much exactly what we expect. We're just going to get a lot of stretching. So as those as those animals push on it, we're just going to get it stretched out and then you're going to have to go in there or retighten it or do something. So anyhow, when we did all this, we had a great idea. Um, in the next video that we're going to do, we're going to talk about how we came upon that idea and what we're going to do. But we do have these two items for sale on our website swifence.com we've got the key for the impala or the taurus or el toro whatever you want to call it and we do have the head so if you're into roping or you just want a commemorative item then purchase those that money will be going to a good cause and you'll see all about that uh, i don't know we're going to set the prices artificially high because we are going to use the money for good as you will see in the next video anyhow if you like what we're doing make sure you subscribe if you hate what we're doing let us know how we're doing it wrong we're always open to ideas. Hit the little notification bell so that you know the next time we have some harebrained idea what we're doing. And be sure to follow along for all the action. That's really all I have to say about that. And until next time, you have a good dang day.